solemn declaration not to be lying when they sign that solemn declaration. Uh, and candidates can withdraw up to May 29th. After that time, if they decide to withdraw, their name is still going to be on the ballot. So if you get nominated and then think twice about it, then make sure you let me know before the 29th that you're, going to, you're not going to run. Otherwise, your name is going to be on the ballot. You may get a few votes. Now, the campaign period is from May 23rd to June 19th. And as I said previously, the commissioner will help the campaign by distributing information from the candidates to the voters. So we'll talk to whomever gets nominated and uh, give them the particulars about what they can provide. So I'm assuming that everybody can provide sort of one eight and a half by 11 sheet of information because uh, otherwise, you know, if you, if you, if you write a, a novel, it's going to be a little expensive to distribute to everybody. So one, one piece of paper. And the candidates will have the voters list. Candidates and their supporters have to adhere to a code of conduct when they're campaigning. So you need to abide by the rules, not harass people. You can't campaign within a certain distance of polling stations or those kinds of things. Those details are laid out in, in the election. Yes? Yeah, when you're saying harassing, uh, what point does it go to when uh, you're sitting there harassed? Well, you know, if somebody's phoning you at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'd say that was harassing. If they bug you three or four times and they don't want to talk to you. Or, hmm? Even in the afternoon or whatever. Well, you know, if, if, if people are feeling that candidates are harassing them, then they should contact me and, and I'll take action. If, if you know, like, there's mostly in the daytime. Yep. Not in the nighttime. Because everybody's sleeping there, right? We would hope. Yeah. Okay? Because there's harassment, a lot of harassment in the daytime. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But candidates have a right to go and solicit the vote. So that means they have a right to knock on your door or to call you up and say, Hey, listen, I'm a candidate. Can I talk to you? If you say no and they keep bugging you, well, then that becomes harassment. But also, you know, they can't come, you know, they can't be campaigning at the polling station. They can't read the sign that says no solicitation. Well, you know, a lot
by the entire virtue of the act, there will be in all candidates we in Port Alberta on the 19th of June because that's required under the act. There may be another one in, in Port Alberta, and I'll consult with the people in, in the relation about where and when. And we intend to hold another all candidates meeting here in the next. Uh, voting. So you can vote in person on June 20th. There will be a poll here uh, and, and a poll in Port Alberni. And the polls will be open from 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 in the evening. You can also vote by mail-in ballot, but you need to request a mail-in ballot from me by May 28th if you want to vote by mail. -in. Yes? Excuse me, but... Uh you know, I don't trust that computer rigmarole and everything like that. Why can't we just do it on paper? It's all on paper and there, is no, there is no computer. Because uh, we already got pooped uh, for that LMG thing here. We all went for it. So there, there is no computer voting in this election. We That's only good. vote on paper. It's all going to be on paper? All on paper. Thank you. And so you can go in and, and, and go. There's no advanced poll, so there's only the one. No computer stuff. No computers. Yeah, right on. Right. But if you if you're not going to be around on the 20th here or in the morning, or if you know other people who are out of town and you want their, their vote, then make sure that they get in touch with me and ask for a mail in ballot. Yeah. We'll no vote. computer stuff. Then. No. That's right on. I like that. So the mail in ballots will be distributed on May 29th. So, and they must be received back by uh, the close of the election day, essentially. Now, the post office is not open on Saturday, but if if somebody were to walk into the poll with a mail-in ballot on election day, I would accept it. As long as it gets there before 8 o'clock on election day. Yeah, the mail-in package will go out and there will be a return envelope, and the address will be on that return envelope. And the postage will be on the mail. <coughs> they will rent a special mail. It takes 14 days from a mailing from here to get to any amount. So that means that people have to be, you know, it's your responsibility as voters. And if you're going to be candidates, it's your responsibility to ensure that your voters understand that they need to mail this thing in early enough that it gets to me before well, the 19th is when the post office, the last day of the post office. We got a vote uh, so, uh, 18 days ahead of time because the mailing system here is very slow. You know what I mean? Or show up at the poll. No, it, it takes so, 14 counting. days to get a letter from got, out of here to get to where it's got to go. I heard well, we're in a situation here where... No, but you can just vote. You just come here and vote. Yeah. You can just come here and vote. You don't have to vote there. Yeah. I appreciate that mail it in sooner. So, you know, if you know people who are fishing, then make sure that they ask for the thing, get it, and get it back in other time. Yeah. So, we do the counting on election day after the close of the polls. And what we're going to do is we're going to ship the ballot box, the sealed ballot box, from an act of the board for the count. My concern is that if there's a, only a few people voting in that count, because the next day is actually, well, it, well voting day is, is National Aboriginal Day, there's lots of stuff going on in, in court, and so people, a lot of people will be out of town, right? They'll, they'll, they'll go and decide to vote in the If there's only five people to vote here, and we count the ballots here, then that compromises the secrecy of the ballot. So if, the, if we take the sealed ballot box from here, to Port Alberni, and then we mix up the, the vote, the mail, mail in ballots, the ballots in the ballot box from the port, and the ballots in the ballot box from here, then nobody will know how people here vote. And, and this is important to maintain the integrity of the voting system, which says that your vote is a secret vote. Yes? Excuse me. Like, uh, you're saying that uh, our votes from our reserve down here is going to mix up with the people that are not on our reserve. They're all sidewalk commandos. They no, all we're talking the about shit. people who are no, on the board. No, 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 let me finish. Okay. And uh, they're going to overpower us? Where 
where we count them makes no difference to the end result of the election. All it does is it means then that people who vote here, if there's only a few people who vote here, it maintains the secrecy of their ballot. So the people who vote in Port Alberni are also to aid citizens who are on the voters list. So you're you telling could go, me we're nothing. You could go to Port Alberni and vote if you wanted to. So, so you're your telling me we're nothing down here. So your vote and their votes are the same. You just told me something right there. We, we ask people that live in a reserve here, we got nothing. The so, people on uh, the sidewalk commandos, they got more poll than we do. So there we go. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So the ballots will be mixed and counted together. Donald the Dairy Queen people. So preliminary result will be announced immediately after the count. Uh, and the final results will be announced in two days after the count, as long as there's no request for a recount. So anybody who wants to can ask for a recount. But they have to, again, provide grounds for why it should be recounted, that the count doesn't accurately reflect. You know, I trust the you and everything I've like got, but okay. I trust you and everything I've got, partner. I do. I really do, but, but you're so, telling us the truth, and I hear the truth, and I appreciate that. Yeah. And the same thing with challenges to the election. You can challenge the, the, the election, but it also has to be based on legitimate grounds according to the election. Yeah. You have to say that these people voted and shouldn't have voted. These people were denied the vote and they should have been unable to vote. This person engaged in a corrupt practice during the campaign. This person was ineligible to run. So it's not something that should be done lightly to challenge the, the result of the and my objective is to make sure that the whole process is as open and transparent as possible so that there will be no need for anybody to ask for a 